In today's video, we will be looking at Scrintle, which is a visual note-taking app, and it's going to completely transform how you digest information, plan lessons, or do research. Now, a quick thank you to Scrintle for sponsoring this video. You'll find a link in the description below, and if you'd like to try it out or test out Scrintle by yourself, clicking that link in the description will take you straight to their website. So let's have a look at why you might want to check out Scrintle. Now, it is a way of visually organizing your information, thoughts, and planning, which as teachers, you know, we do have a lot of planning that goes on behind the scenes. We like to have post-its all over our desk, post-its on our laptop. Maybe there's even documents stuck with pins to our display boards. What Scrintle is, is it's a digital version of that desk, and it allows you to link different ideas together. So here, for example, this is my desk. It can get a little bit messy. It's an infinite canvas. I can add ideas onto this desk. However, these individual ideas don't live in a world by themselves. They are connected. They are linked together. So here you can see I have a little doc or a card on my desk that says key people in our computing curriculum. Now we've completely redesigned our computing curriculum at school. So we have key figures in our computing curriculum that we look at with our students. One of those people linked here at the top is Hedy Lamar. A second person is Steve Jobs and another is Grace Hopper. Each of these people gets their own card. We also have John von Neumann and well, let's add another because another person we look at within our school is Alan Turing. So let's go ahead and right click here and I'm going to create a new doc. This is their way of creating cards. So let's create a doc, pop it onto my desk and add Alan Turing. Okay. We are now going to change the way this card looks. So here at the top, you can see I can change the color. I'm going to use this orangey salmon color for all my key people. And I'm also going to toggle the layout to make it a bit smaller. Now these ideas are not yet connected. So what I can do is I can click on key people in computing and take one of these little dots and now I simply drag that to Alan Turing. That means that these ideas are now connected. Alan Turing may be connected to someone else and you can drag that arrow to another place. However, at this time we don't have that. Now this is all good and well, but what do these cards do? Well, let's have a look at Hedy Lamar's card. I've already created Hedy Lamar's card here. If I double click on this, I go into the big view. You can see we can add lots of information. We can add in photos. We can add in descriptions. This is a description that will be used with our students. And we can even add in presentations. So for example, here I have the presentation that will be used with our year one class. Well, I can take this link here at the top, I'm going to copy that link, go back to Scrintle, and now simply use a slash and insert that link. So here at the bottom, I can scroll down and I can link the URL. So I'm going to embed that URL, paste my presentation and add it. This now pulls the presentation into this card, can house all the information on Hedy Lamar. Scrolling up, however, you'll see there is also this link here. Now this has a different icon because the way Scrintle works is you have single ideas and then you have this other idea, which is a board. Now when I click on this board, you can see it brings me to a completely different area within Scrintle, which again allows me to put docs onto it. This is called a board. Now you can also see this here on the left hand side. We have docs and boards. Now, the boards that I have at the moment are Hedy Lamar and Steve Jobs. The docs I have, you can see every single individual thought that I've put onto my Scrintle account. I can also go back to my desk. And again, as you recall, this is my desk, all my ideas connected together. I can move around this desk. I can keep adding more ideas to it. I can also add in links. So for example, because this is the main desk where I have to keep information, I've also linked out to the UK curriculum. And when I click on that, it brings me straight to the national curriculum program for Key Stage 1 and 2 with all the objectives that should be met. So you can add in those links onto your desk and onto your boards. Now here, let's go ahead and now work on, for example, Grace Hopper's. I'm going to double click into Grace Hopper. 
The first thing I'll do is add in a photo of her. So we're going to slash, scroll down to where it says image, and we're going to upload an image. Now you can click on this to pull in that image, but let's say that you don't want to do that. Let's say that you prefer to use the browser environment and simply drag and drop it. Well, you can do that as well. Here in my downloads, I can now drag and drop this image into the Squintle doc. Now that's the main reason why they're using the term docs versus cards. Cards are very simple, small. These are full on documents. You can add in so much information. Now when I close this, I can go back to my desk and you'll see that this has that image in it. So I can change the layout. You know, I'm going to change this layout, toggle it. So I can see that little image it just makes it look a little bit nicer. Now let's add in some more ideas. We're going to go back to Alan Turing. Let's click on Alan Turing. And the first idea I'm going to drag from this circle here is the Turing test. So let's talk about Turing test. For now, I'm just putting my ideas there. I can always add more information into these docs. The second thing I want to mention about Alan Turing is sort of laying that foundation of AI. So foundation of AI. We're going to again toggle the layout to make it look good. The colors are going to be yellow because that's what I use for these individual elements. There we go. Alan Turing, we've got another one here that we can add. We're going to look at his contributions. So let's look at contributions. There we go. This will be another layer. So contributions and then from contributions. So we're going to look at three contributions. So the first is sort of that code breaking. Code breaking. There we go. We're going to change the color. I think I used, yeah, I used blue for that. So let's go to blue, change the color to blue and toggle the layouts. The second contribution I will discuss with my students will be the AI concepts. So AI concepts. There we go. Again, blue and toggle that layout. And then the third contribution for Alan Turing will be that machine intelligence. Intelligence, I think that's how you spell it. There we go, blue and toggle the this area. Lots of docs, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven docs all about Alan Turing. Well, I want to group these. I wanna keep these together as a separate board. So if you recall here on the boards, I have a board for Hedy Lamar. you can see this the learning unit and computer systems, a to-do list for this unit, Hedy Lamar's doc, and then lots of individual docs where I can then start populating these docs with more information. I've done the same for Steve Jobs. You can see here, Steve Jobs has his own board. Well, I want our friend Alan Turing to also have his own board. So let's go back to my desk. I'm going to select every little doc here that I've put down for Alan Turing. Now that I've got them all selected, I can turn these into a board. So you can see here it says create a board. Let's create a board. This board, and we're going to call it Alan Turing Planning Board. There we go. And we can start rearranging all these cards however we want to rearrange them. So I'm going to keep this in the middle. This one can go to the side. And then code breaking, AI concepts, and machine learning. So you can see we can have all these boards and everything retains those links. Everything stays linked together. Really good when you're trying to organize ideas, information in a visual way. So let's scroll in. There we go. We're going to go up here, Alan Turing. Let's create a little to-do list because this unit on Alan Turing will have a number of things to do. So let's right click and let's create another doc. We're going to create a doc going to say to do and go into this document. Okay, slash and we're going to scroll down to where it says to do lists. So let's get the task list. Here we go. The first thing will be a presentation for key stage one. We'll also need a presentation created for key stage two. And we'll need to create a timeline for Alan Turing. So these are three things on my to do list. I can close this now and you can see my to-do list is right here. And another thing I really like, let's just give this a visual. We're going to give it a green visual is that it gives you a beautiful running total of what has been completed. So here you can see we have none of the three to-do items ticked. Let's go into another one of our boards. Let's go into Hedy Lamar's board. And here you can see, again, we have that to-do list 
and there are five items that need done. So let's open this. Presentation, well, I've done the presentation. The presentation is completed and you can see it now has one out of five items complete. Now, sometimes you can have so many different boards and docs that it gets a little overwhelming on what you are currently working on. Well, one thing you can do within Squintle is you can star those boards or docs to make it easy to access them. So here on the left-hand side, you see I have none starred. Well, let's say that I'm working on the inventing frequency hopping information. Well, I can right-click on this dock and star it. That means this is now easily accessible on the left-hand side within the starred objects. I can work on this, close it, and it automatically populates this one. So let's have a look at this. For example, inventing frequency hopping. Let's say that I work on this. Well, I want to have a little unordered list. So I'm just going to say list. Let's add in a bullet list. First thing I'm going to look at is Wi-Fi. I'm also going to look at some Bluetooth. And I'm going to look at wireless. There we go. And I maybe even mention something about GPS. Whenever I double click on this one here, it'll automatically open this up. And the information is there all in the same place. So this is a really good way of keeping your ideas all in one place. And then the other thing you can do is you can tag your docs. For example, here we have Hedy Lamar's main doc. You can see we've got an image in there, information, links, document, presentation. I'm going to tag this. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a tag. Women in tech. And it's automatically going to create that tag. I'm going to apply the tag to this card. Now let's go back to my main desk. Remember the main desk with all my ideas that I'm working on? Let's find Grace Hopper. And actually, Grace Hopper should have that same tag. Let's right-click, go to tag. We can search for tags now. I'm looking for women. So there it is, women in tech. I'm going to click on that and apply it. Now she too has that tag added. What that means is they will show up on the left-hand side. So now here on the left-hand side on the tags, I can see all the different tags. I have one tag, women in tech, and it has two docs linked to this. When I click on this, those two docs are here on the left-hand side. And again, I can open these to look at them. Really, really convenient. An amazing way of organizing your thoughts. Now, let's say that you have a board and the board is starting to get a little bit messy. So let's go into Steve Jobs and let's say that this is all over the place. It's really messy. The docs are all over the place. Well, I can right-click. First of all, I can fit it all onto my screen. So it zooms in automatically and then I can right click on this board's canvas again and I can have it organize it. So let's click on organize and there we go. It automatically creates a visual that is appealing and looks great. Now let's go back to the Hedy Lamar board. Here we go, Hedy Lamar. And here on the top right corner, you'll see there's a links icon. When you click on that, you see all the links to all the different docs as well as external links and backlinks. So here you can see it links to all these individual docs. It has the backlinks. Where does this go? And it has the boards. This is when this board is part of another board because you can have boards being part of boards. So overall, Scrintle is well worth looking into. It's an amazing knowledge organizer that will help you visually organize all your ideas and really help you plan. Now, let's say that I finished with this board and I now want to share this with someone. Well, I can click on the name of that board and I can click on share. When I click on share, I can either publish this. That means it becomes available to anyone or I can share it with another user and then we can start collaborating on this board. Another great feature of Scrintle. So to summarize, if you are looking for a tool that will help you plan your lessons, organize ideas and thoughts, if you are looking for something that will help you build that second brain, that knowledge organization, then Scrintle is a tool you may want to look at. Now, if you are excited about Scrintle and you wanna give it a go, Find that link in the description below. Now, I would highly recommend that you do give it a go. Give it a try. Click on that link down below. Now, I want to thank Squintle for sponsoring this video. It's not just a sponsor. It is a tool I actually use and enjoy using to, for example, organize our brand new computing curriculum at our school. Now, thank you to everyone watching this video. Thank you to the channel members, Patreon supporters, and everyone on screen right now. In the meantime, 
Thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful and I will see you in the next one.